All righty, Chase, you're good to go. Hello, yeah, so my name is Chase Funk. I am a uh, history major with doing the GIS certificate. Um, I recently switched from cybersecurity to history. And this being this being intro to GIS, this was my first time uh, using using these programs. And it's really interesting and very cool uh, learning how to make maps. It's honestly really fun. Um, so, uh, this project um, is Georgia Confederate Mon Monument statuses. Basically, I think the Heritage Foundation is that who it was. Um, uh, I think, did you get your data from the Southern Poverty Law Center? So, Southern, Southern Poverty Law Center, yeah, that one. Um, has a, uh, has data on Confederate named um, things throughout the, throughout the country, mostly official government senses. Uh, so like government property and roads and parks um, and statu Confederate statues and um, has basically data on that throughout the entire United States of officially government sponsored Confederate statues. Um, and since that's a hot button topic, um, uh, the data was really interesting and really revealing because what we kind of saw was that there is a lot of Confederate named things in the entire United States. Um, so what I did was I took the data and um, extrapolated it just down to Georgia. Um, and basically, I kind of wanted to see, you know, okay, um, uh, monuments was the thing that I was the most interested in because I think that those are the most, you know, th that's the most hot button issue. That's also, I think, the most revealing. Um, uh, r other things like uh, a government building uh, named park names, um, school names uh, like Jefferson Davis School or Robert E. Lee School or Lee School. For instance, Lee County, which is, um, uh, I think, uh, I think it's on the Alabama side or something like that is Lee County. Um, but like, so what basically, you know, you have these sort of light things that are, uh, that may be kind of, that maybe, you know, they're just in sort of uh, the vernacular now. Um, but Confederate monuments, that's just, you know, that's just a dedication to the to the the wrong side of the Civil War. Um, and so basically what we can see is that, you know, Georgia has uh, removed um, some statues, um, and that's the blue pins, um, mostly around Atlanta. Um, but there still is a lot of Civil War monuments throughout the South. Um, some of these are, um, like Columbus has several, uh, two, I think, um, uh, other, others, it's just dotted around. Um, now not all these monuments are built the same. Not all of them are stat are all statues. Some of them are, um, uh, some of them are you know, plaques or just stones that look kind of, uh, uh, that, that don't really have any purpose. And then you read it and it's like, oh, this is a civil war dedication. Um, and, uh, now the, the most interesting thing I found when, and, uh, representing this was a bit hard was the year that they were dedicated. Most of these, if there was dedication years, it was, basically 40 to 50 years after the civil war when most of the monuments were sort of constructed most and basically there and most of them also were um sponsored by a a couple associations and one was the united daughters of the of the south i think it is of the confederacy daughters of the confederacy yeah and sons of the confederacy basically uh, a pretty, you know, racist sort of group that went around in the um, early 19 or early uh, 20th century and basically uh, uh, sponsored and paid for 
Confederate monuments all over the all over the United States. They, they even from from uh, from Georgia all the way up to Washington and California. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I can really think of. Okay, good deal. Yeah, thanks for sharing a little bit about that, Chase. Um, can I ask you to say a little bit more about the sort of the GIS part of the project in terms of how you how you took the data from the Southern Poverty Law Center website? And uh, because for for those who are watching who don't know, that data was sort of in the, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet format. How did you take it from a spreadsheet and get it into a map? And then once you got it into a map, how did you symbolize your features? Yes. Um, so uh, when I got it, it was pure spread an Excel spreadsheet. Um, what was really cool was uh, it has the X and Y. Every, every statue had an X and Y coordinate, and there was thousands and thousands of of statues throughout the United States. Um, and uh, so basically all I had to do was split that X and Y coordinate down and the GIS software automatically sees, picks that up and uh, sim and automatically generates and symbolizes, um, automatically uh, puts down uh, the points uh, throughout all, all thousands of um, uh, Confederate monuments and statues. Uh, uh, after that, it was, it was, um, I kind of took it. There was a lot of data on the whole of the U S. Um, so I, you know, zoomed into Georgia. I got, I got rid of every point that wasn't, uh, that wasn't in Georgia. Um, but then the question was, you know, how do I symbolize this? What do I, what do, uh, how do I kind of display it? Um, because, you know, we have all these monuments, what makes them different? Um, they have, each one had different categories. Uh, so, uh, for instance, you know, there was like schools and, um, you know, like courthouses names. Um, all of these were, you know, had a category that uh, the spreadsheet had. So what I did or like, you know, so... The, for instance, you know, there was schools, county municipality, counties and municipality, buildings. Um, and so it's like, okay, those are a bit similar. So I kind of grouped those together and just put those under government properties. Um, same thing I did with roads and parks. You know, there was roads and parks and lakes. I was like, okay, I can just kind of group those together. Um, and then there was other, which uh, I think there's only like two or three. And what other is, is, um, let's see, I think others are like, yeah, I think it's lakes are like other. Um, if I remember correctly, it was Lake Lanier was the only yeah, one listed. Yeah, in Georgia, right? okay. yeah exactly. Lake Lanier. Um, yeah, exactly. And it's just so, it's just like, it's, I guess I could put that in roads and parks, but it was very other. It was a very interesting uh, thing. Um, and so, and basically because it had, because each one had the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center in, in the data had the different uh, symbol types and symbol categories already listed. Um, I could use the software to basically pull the ones I wanted. And what I really wanted was the monuments. Um, they also have a, they also had a, um, if the monument was live or not, if, if the monument was still there, um, relocated, removed, renamed, um, which was, which was really nice. So basically I took that data and I was able to separate it out to see, okay, some of these were, some of these monuments were, gotten rid of, which I think is kind of nice. Um, yeah. So what did you learn from your analysis in terms of, you know, where certain monuments have been removed from and where they're still in place uh, in terms of the kind of the spatial distribution across the state of Georgia? Yeah, it looks like it looks like basically in the the uh, Atlanta area is like the most the most uh, concentrated area. Um, and also Savannah, it's, it's interesting because like, you know, only it, it seems like it was a city sort of thing where if the city wanted to get rid of the monuments, the city got rid of, but it wasn't a, 
uh, a jo- like a Georgia wide, um, uh, a Georgia wide sort of thing. It looks like it's it was up to um, particular governments. Uh, local governments as to if they remove the statue or not. So we haven't gotten to the point where local governments all local all across Georgia have started getting rid of statues, just um, all just Atlanta or Savannah. That makes sense. That kind of tracks a little bit with some of the patterns we've seen of Confederate monument removal across the country, you know, where places like Washington, D.C. and Richmond, um, larger cities have have been kind of the site of a lot of the more intense activism around getting the monuments removed. It makes sense to see those concentrations in Atlanta and Savannah. The one that pops out that's interesting to me is there seems to be one that's a little more rural kind of in the spot between Columbus and Macon. Do you happen to remember or know what um, what town that is there? Uh, yes, I uh, no, but I can actually check up. Um, I think that's, yeah, R.E. Lee Institute School and oh, renamed cool. Thomas Upton Government Complex. Um, yeah, it, it was a school renamed uh, in 1999. So I think it was just, I don't know, I don't think it was even renamed um, uh, like, you know, I think it was just renamed because... You know, it, it was an old school building, but okay, and not and not sort of part of the more recent effort mm-hmm. since like 2015, 2017. Yeah, yeah, it and was down and renamed. Okay, and, and honestly, kind of looking at it now, probably going back in and and pulling out the outliers, um, because you know this the data the the problem with working this with this data was that it tracks everything, and there's a lot of outliers. There's a mm-hmm. lot of like. You know, this was like like we just talked about. This was a school named in 1999 that or that that was named in the 1800s and was changed in 1999 when it switched from a school to something else. Um, And they still track that. And there's a lot of outliers in the data. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Good. So I'm going to ask one more question, Chase, and then I'll give Clarice or Ivy a chance to ask a question if they want to. what might you do with a project like this or with a data set like this? If you had, say, if you had more time, uh, more opportunity to do some kind of planning and organizing of your ideas. And uh, if it, in, in other words, if you had more resources and more opportunity and more time outside of just sort of a, a term project for a class, what kind of analysis or mapping project might you be interested in doing with this data set over a longer term period of time? And like I said, with sort of more time to sit and think and work with the data set. Um, I think it would be interesting to like find the actual, like, you know, not just the, but, but go through and find the, the, the ones that were, um, uh, find the purpose and why, uh, monuments were put up and to take out and find the purely like this was put up because in response to um, in response to people dissing the Confederacy or, you know, response to um, uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, my brain kind of uh, stopped for a second, but no. Um, But yeah, I basically ones that were put up purely for a racist um, purpose. Uh, not just because, you know, not just the outliers, but find the monuments throughout the entire United States that can be basically like, this is a statue of Robert E. Lee. It was put up in, it was put up here. Um, and this, it was put up at this uh, time sponsored by these not very good people in 1940. Um, and this is why they're bad. Basically doing analysis on, you know, uh, not just where, but why, and um, and taking down the big problematic ones instead of the smaller roads and bridges and stuff like that. Uh, you're muted, Dr. Brasher. Thank you. Um, Clarice, Ivy, any questions for Chase about his map?
Did you like just by by looking at it before you like cut it down to Georgia, did you notice anywhere else in the US that had like a very high concentration of the set, like same style of monuments? Um basically uh, basically, it was a lot of uh, lots of the South, so Alabama, Tennessee, um, Virginia, uh, uh, Florida, a little bit of Florida, not not surprisingly not as much as I thought there was going to be, and um, uh, and Texas had a lot. But there's also the, the most interesting thing about the data was there is a lot of stuff there there is a lot in like california strangely enough um or not a lot but but a lot more than i thought because like i said before the um these daughters of the confederacy and sons of the confederacy in the 1920s and 30s and 40s went around all over the place and just like planted sponsored and planted down statues um confederate monuments all over the all of the u.s Interesting. Thank you. Chase, I don't know if you're seeing this, but Ivy put a question in the chat asking, uh, when you looked at locations for the Confederate monuments, were there any kind of data on what the dominant demographic of the area was like? Um, there was not, but I think that would be a very, very interesting um, uh, data layer to put on top of this, because to see like, Okay, probably if the area is mostly white, probably not going to that, you know, what are the chances of that monument coming down? Um, and really, it's, I kind of get that feeling is that, you know, it, it because Georgia and because of the entire US is kind of like letting local government and sort of outrage and sort of like, um, uh, uh, sort of the the population um, decide when the monuments come down instead of like we need to take this stuff down it's not good um, it, we'll probably see these statues be up for a, a, a unfortunately a much longer some some of them a very long time um, because probably no one in the community cares to take it down yeah, it's a good question, Ivy. I think it might be really interesting um, to sort of follow up on my earlier question about what you might do if you had more time and resources to do a, a longer term, bigger project to kind of overlay census data with, um, you know, census data about demographics of the area to see which schools and, and monuments that still exist with Confederate commemoration are located in majority white or majority black areas, higher income, lower income areas. And those that have, out of those that have been removed, are they mostly in higher or lower income areas? Are they mostly in all white, all black areas? Um, questions like that might be interesting to pursue further. So great question, Ivy. Um, let's stop the recording here. Uh, Chase, really nice work. Good job on your project. And uh, we can talk more about it uh, off of the recording, but I'm going to stop it here. Okay.